This is the wear and tear. I don't do anything special to it. Most of the time I leave it like this. You cannot get more classic than black and gold. I didn't even know that there was a difference. Very similar size. That little square symbol, is it still okay to get it? Hey guys, if you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Amy. I asked you guys on my Instagram if you wanted to know an update on any of my recent purchases. By far the most popular ones were my mini Lindy and my Tiffany lock bracelet. They were actually a tie. So let's talk about the mini Lindy first since it's the newest bag in my collection. One of you asked me if it is my favorite non-quota bag. Is it my favorite? Between these two, they're quite strong. But I will say that if this one was not in touch, which I'll get into later, then yes, it is my most favorite. It's such a mighty little bag. It fits everything. It's so easy to get in and out. Normally, I don't close it all the way like this. Most of the time, I leave it like this. Very quick access, just two zippers, and you pretty much see everything, and it fits a lot. Occasionally, when I'm reaching in and out quite often, then I will do up the front and not the zippers. What I like about this bag is that it's so casual but it's so useful. It's very practical. The strap is also very adequate for my height. I'm 5'4", a good casual, but also functional and smaller size crossbody because crossbody bags, when they get too heavy, I find them very uncomfortable. It's bulky, it's bulging out. So it was a tie between the Mini Lindy and my Tiffany lock bracelet. A lot of you wanted to know how I'm doing with this, any update whether I wear it all the time and if it's worth it and all that. And the answer is I have not changed my mind from my initial reveal and also just first impression. I will also link to the original video of this bracelet. Um, let me give you another close up. I have my love bracelet. This is the slim or the small size love bracelet in extra small size. This is my Tiffany lock bracelet, also an extra small size. I think the chunkiness of this part of the bracelet makes it look like a much bigger bracelet, but it is in fact very similar size. Otherwise, they both work very well together in tandem. They definitely fit my wrist and they are comfortable. They don't turn on their own. Like I said, Tiffany's bangle between the extra small and the small and then the small to the medium and the medium to the large it's such a big difference so i think finding the right size for you is probably the biggest challenge but other than that really everything i said in my initial unboxing and first impression i really really still feel the same way it's such a great bracelet it's so beautiful it's well made it feels robust and yet there's a dainty side of it, which is the diamond pavé side. I also love the fact that from this point of view, kind of more edgy bracelet, but at the same time, it's got the pavé on the other side, which I tend to wear on top because I like looking at it. The main, 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 main advantage, which I really appreciate, is the fact that you could just literally easily remove it which i do because they don't recommend that you shower with it of course you can which i have as well but my essay didn't recommend it for me i don't know if it because mine is in white gold i don't know if that makes a difference i was told that white gold can wear and tear over time and become more yellow because there's no such thing as white gold right it is just the plating on top the rhodium plating so i'm not sure if that's the reason uh, regardless, I don't mind removing it because after showering, I always have to slather on a lot of cream anyway. I don't really like the idea of all the creams going through the, the nooks and crannies like this hole here or all the diamond settings. I just don't like it, so I just remove it. It's not that hard. Usually, I wear this bracelet on this arm because... I like that they're separate. I like that I can always just change it up, wear on this arm along with my love. I just love the versatility. Yes, I do wear it all the time. I wear it to sleep. The only time during the day I'm not wearing my bracelet, the Tiffany lock bracelet, is when I shower. That is the only time, but otherwise I cook with it, I wash my hands with it. And if you did forget to remove it before you shower, I'm sure it's fine. Like. I've done that myself. It's not a big deal. It is expensive, but I feel like it's worth the investment in terms of what you're really getting. It's substantial. For me, this has exceeded my expectation. I fell in love the moment I tried it on. It works so great with my wedding rings and I'm just, I'm so head over heels. The very sort of like superficial, very tiny micro scratches are on the white gold surface here. 
but again you're not gonna see it because usually with the light reflecting back it will just look like a really shiny chunky bracelet from afar and even from like being on my wrist I can't even see it um, so yeah this is the wear and tear I don't do anything special to it I haven't cleaned it I will also insert a very short video clip of me trying the Van Cleef signature bangle. I originally wanted to try their very dainty perle. I didn't know that they were so popular. They were just literally completely sold out. Regardless, I still went ahead and tried their signature bangle just for the sizing because I was told by a lovely subscriber that I needed that bracelet. Even the essay said so, and she thinks that it will look really good on me. So she'll let me know when they have more stock coming in, but as far as right now, they don't know when, cannot order it, and they don't know when they'll get more stock. So, I mean, yeah, pretty dramatic. I tried the gold bangle in 16 centimeter, which is their size small. The white gold bangle in their extra small, and that one is 14.5 centimeter. When I was trying on the VCA signature bangle, the essay had warned me that apparently a lot of her clients had actually bent their bracelets by, I don't know, sleeping on their arm or whatever, and they're just not meant to be. And I can tell that they were not like a very thick piece of gold. It's very kind of dainty and lightweight, which this is not. I sleep with this for sure. There's no problems. And I haven't heard of anybody complaining about this bracelet having any sort of wear and tear issues that um, are really like bad. A quick update on my Picotin 18 touch, especially when I'm going for more of a handheld bag. So I don't really need that crossbody functionality. I just want a cute little handheld bag, but I don't really want to wear my Birkin because there are days like that going to places that are a little bit more casual anyway. I just grabbed this because this is so awesome. It's just great capacity, lightweight bag, and it really fits a lot. This bag before the Mini Lindy has definitely been my favorite non quota bag. It still is, but I think the Mini Lindy is also kind of up there as well, so they're kind of even. I also got asked a very interesting question, and I was trying to figure out why this person was asking me this. So he was actually asking me about the stamping on this bag, and why on my video it was not showing a little symbol beside the Hermes stamping. First of all, I didn't even know that there was a difference. I do own this piece, which is all exotic, and I did notice that on the stamping of this one. This one is my Constance Slim. It does have this little symbol on the bottom with a little bar. So I guess this represents the type of lizard that this one comes with. So you see that little bar on the bottom, and that's how I realized that exotic leathers do come with a different stamping. This one is only partially exotic. So when I was filming my video and I was trying to show the stamp or the bottom of the bag and I was having such a hard time showing because it was really hard for me to focus. Like if I did this, you wouldn't see it anyway unless I had to separately take a picture and really focus on there, which I think I'll just do that. I'll literally use my iPhone. <laughs> So you're gonna see my messy room, but anyway. Now do you see that my bag does have that symbol there? That little square symbol, which I wasn't able to record when I was just using my regular camera. And I didn't know that they were different, so I literally used a picture from Fashion File. Like I used the black picotin bag from Fashion File and I used that for the inside without realizing that mine had an extra symbol because of the exotic leather. It is an important detail, which I had no idea. I, I wasn't aware that my bag was different. Again, it was my first year of collecting Hermes when I got this bag. Um, but anyway, regardless, now you know this bag does require some sort of structure, especially if you don't have this version, which the exotic leather really helps keep the structure a bit, but otherwise you really still need an organizer of some sort to really keep the overall structure and um, make sure that it doesn't sag on the bottom. So I guess that's the con of this bag, but then for the price that they are and how well made they are, 
seriously they are so good i really want another color okay let's jump back to another piece of um not jewelry but it, it almost is for me because it's my Hermes watch which is relatively recent i still love it as you can see it's beautiful i didn't end up doing an adjustment um to make it tighter yet i wanted to just wait till we get the really warmer months and also try to wear some of my bracelets on this side with it and just see how I feel. So I haven't gone and adjusted the length more. Uh, I just left it with my initial adjustments and I still love it. But do you really need to buy Hermes watches? No, they're just nice watches with a brand name, but they're not collectible watches. But yeah, otherwise it's really pretty. So there, this is my Nantucket. And mine is a little different because it's the special order and there's only one that exists because I'm pretty sure no one engraved my name <laughs> under their own watches and also the combination that I chose. Although this is not a bag that is a recent purchase, by far it is not, but I did get an inquiry and I was asked, is it still okay to get it? That was the question. I may be biased, but I think it's still okay to get it. Yes, Chanel prices have definitely sword but so did Hermes and so did many other brands. I would say other than my Gabrielle, all the other Chanel bags that I own look very similar. They just have that kind of structured mini or small size classic flap look. Even the chains and everything is different so I love it. If I need something more casual and a better size, then the Chanel 19 is really really good for that. This bag came out in 19k and I got it in 20C, so it's literally the season right after its debut. And so they were still making it in lambskin at the time. The quilts are beautifully soft and, and yet it's, it has that robustness. But it's not so firm and so robust that you don't feel that it's a pillow, like if that makes sense. It's just the perfect amount of puffiness. Yes, it's going to be expensive at the current retail price. So it's really up to you and if it's worth it for you to get it. I always store it with the um, the Samorga. So this is exactly how I store it. Uh, this chain right here, I tend to put it towards the back. And if you're really paranoid, you can put a piece of felt right here so that it doesn't touch the leather. But I've had no problems with it whatsoever. So this is exactly how I store my bag. So the Kelly was also a requested update. It's very interesting that no one asked about the Birkin. But if I had to say a word about the Birkin is that I wouldn't be without it in my collection either. In a hypothetical situation where I can only get one Hermes bag, I think this one would be it. Having that extra kind of relief. Going from that point of view, yes, if I only could choose one, I would choose the Kelly 25, hands down. I think for me, it would have been a matter of owning both eventually. A lot of people complain about how the Kelly 25 Cillier version is stiff and like hard to get in and out. I don't find it to be the way and I don't know if it's because it has already loosened up. So when I get in my bag, usually the shoulder strap is on me so like it would be held via here right and i tend to just like use my thumb and just push out the front right here and it's just like i mean it's just so easy to get in and out i don't find it to be hard at all a lot of people were worried that i would always wear it more open and that this part would like break or something i leave it open when i'm just grabbing something and I know I'm gonna put it back sooner after so I will always close my bag afterwards but you just happen to see me with my bag open when I took the picture but don't worry I always close my bag anyway my point is I love this bag I use it a lot and this size is still my preferred size I may still consider different sizes in the future but I think to start with I'm so happy it went with this that's my update on this I don't know what else I can talk about the color, yeah, the color is great. I love the fact that I got both my Birkins and Kelly in black because they're so hard wearing colors. I never have to worry about getting it dirty. Of course, I would love to get a light color now, but again, something to work on in the future. At that point, I can also decide whether I want a bigger bag or stick with the same size. You cannot get more classic than black and gold at the Constant Slim. I've gotten this small leather good uh, back in November in Hawaii 
and I have yet to use it since Hawaii. I think it's because of two reasons and I actually need your help and your feedback perhaps. Um, so I think reason number one is because ever since coming back, it was the winter season for us. So for me, there was no real way to style this, like especially if it's on the inside of my jacket or my coat, then it's always going to be inside. And so I didn't really wear it over the winter season. The second reason that I'm thinking is that um, because it is really more of a belt bag, so I always have to wear it on the waist. And this is where I want to ask you guys, do you have or have you tried any conversion kits that you like and recommend? I did some research myself as well, and I found one on Etsy that looks pretty good. Very similar to one that I found on someone else's YouTube video from Taobao. But you kind of have to know how to navigate the website, which is all in Chinese. My Chinese reading is not that great, and so I couldn't buy it from that site directly. But the one that I found on Etsy is very similar. If not, I think they're using the same pictures. So I don't know if they're really the same company. Regardless, I'm going to put it on the screen. This is the one that I found. It seems like their newest design, which the leather piece that is attached to the insert is also adjustable. Because it's all leather and no hardware, I feel like it wouldn't damage the sides of the bag. Again, this is not a bag, but I, I'm thinking that I might need to convert this into a bag for me to wear more often. Those of you who do own this piece, do you end up wearing it often or more often after converting it? Or do you just really only wear it on occasion and always using the belt loop? That's what I'm trying to figure out. The other thing I was thinking about also is that because it's already quite slim, is that insert gonna constrict the inside so much that it makes it unusable. That's the other concern I have. I find that this one is actually a smaller capacity than my Chanel. They are very similar size. In fact, they look pretty much identical from the outside. But the Chanel is actually wider. Like, it actually is wider. And the Chanel has all the space on the inside is usable. There's no gussets that really cave in that wouldn't expand totally. This is also lambskin leather, so it's very, very flexible. It actually fits so much in this nano bag, which is why I've always recommended this one. With this, because it has this concave design and it's not like a very soft lambskin like the Chanel, you see what I mean? It's, it's a little bit more rigid. The leather is definitely stiffer. I really don't think I'll be using both this and this at the same time because it'll just take up all the space. Definitely not on my radar. It was not on my wish list. I fell in love with the piece. I mean, look at how beautiful it is. And it, it looked so great with my outfit that day. It even looks great with what I'm wearing today. I had to take it, but I haven't worn it since then, um, which is why I, I don't know if it's a piece that a lot of people end up getting, but they don't really end up using it as much. But then again, it has been really cold, raining and snowing. So it, it wasn't really a piece that I felt like would style well with my winter outfits. I'm thinking when it gets to like 18, 19, 20 degrees, that's when it's comfortable to wear this more as part of an outfit with the belt. But yeah, let me know your feedback on the conversion kit and whether that helps you wear your bag more. Those of you who haven't seen the unboxing, I will link it down below as well. In fact, all the items that I mentioned, even this one, um, I'll just I'll just link all the videos. There was actually one more inquiry, but it's not about a recent purchase. It's actually a request to do a roundup of all my recent purchases from Hermes uh, for my H journey so far. And that will probably take a little while to film because my stuff is just gathered everywhere. Also a lot of gift items that I bought that I handed out to people already, so I don't have those to show you. But anyway, maybe one day it'll be an interesting video to do because um, I'm still kind of in the middle of my journey. That concludes all the updates for these items that you guys are interested in. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. I also co-host a live stream every single week and also extra exclusive members only live streams where we do more intimate storytelling and unboxings. Also join the membership as well. I'll talk to you guys again very soon in the comment section and have a great day. Bye!